Thanks. Hey, hey, can we put the, the photos? All right. Okay, so I have the honor of doing this 10-year anniversary, but it is also a burden. So this is an old scoreboard, scoreboard I guess. Uh, it is also a burden because uh, I'm here to uh, host something that I didn't create, okay? And uh, something that many people contributed to, many people uh, spearheaded, and I know now how much work this represents. Um, so we will uh, basically feature today in a talk show style, laid back, the guests, uh, not the guests, the creators of NordSec, and we'll have them, you know, one by one and add to the, to the party. And we will go through uh, three eras of NordSec, okay? by presidencies um, and uh, yeah I would like to, sh to showcase their work but we will also take questions from the audience uh, if, if you want. Um, we, are, we will be allowed to uh, speak some French parce que des fois c'est plus drôle en français. So bear with us. Uh, we will try to keep it English, uh, you know, for accessibility reasons, because because we're an international event, we have people flying over all the place uh, to come here, and we would like to have more and more of that if we want to be the biggest uh, CTF in the world. Uh, so uh, so we will try to keep as much English as possible, but I want my, my guests to know that if something is funnier in French, feel free to say so. All right. I will uh, invite up on the stage right now Amandine uh, Gagnon Hébert, who is our VP Engagement. Uh, Amandine, are you here? Simon? You need to find Amandine. <laughs> we, uh, we were, uh, they were briefed. They know they should be here, but apparently it didn't work out. So we'll uh, skip her and uh, have Emil first, and then we'll, we'll switch back to Amazon. So is Emil in the house? Yeah. <laughs> Sit right here, man. So Emil is our uh, vice president of the competition, which is our weird way of saying CTF, because the uh, CTF translates badly in, in French. Um, so Emil. Uh, how long have you been involved with NordSec? And what was your path to NordSec? Uh, oh. Ça, ça marche dessus. OK. Hello. Um, so um, it's, and I think the first time I, I participated at NordSec was somewhere in 2014, I think. Uh, I, as a participant, I, really, I was really bad. And uh, I, 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 I was very, very bad. And, and essentially, uh, at, after like one day of full CTF and trying to do to find any flags, uh, I think I found like one flag in the in the rules, um, and then I decided to get drunk. In the rules, <laughs> you found the rules flag. Yep. Okay. <laughs> and and this is the path to vice president. <laughs> uh, we miss you. Interesting. All right. Um, any, do you have any specific anecdote you would like to share uh, to, uh, about the CTF? Like, what's your, what's the moment that comes to mind right now for you uh, about the CTF? Uh, I, I think that my, my best moment for uh, NordSec, uh, it's a, and it's a tribute to Simon, uh, which was the VP uh, CTF before me, uh, is that, like, I, I remember coming in and just, like, seeing the, the room and everything happening uh, at NordSec, just having Simon in a disguise coming to my table and being like, hey, do you want some bread? And I'm like, what? <laughs> and, and like, it, it was kind of a, a very fun experience to see like that Nordsec was not only just a CTF that you, you stay behind your computer and, and do like, you know, find the crypto 500 and the whatever. It's, it was more physical, there was things happening and yeah, it was a, a full immersive experience. It was a CTF, but it was also a bakery is what you're saying. Yes, yes. So for those who don't know, we made fresh bread for the year that the theme was Addison Bakery, which is a play on the Addis, Ashley Addison, uh, Ashley, Ashley Madison, Madison Leak. Uh, 
That's for Saturday, man. Keep it clean. Um, yeah, so uh, interesting because it smelled the bread the whole year. And they were doing, like, uh, it was Pierre David's sourdough, and uh, they were doing this in large bins. It was a bit crazy operation. Um, I have a, 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 one last question for you, Emil. What are your thoughts, and this is serious, what are your thoughts on elitism versus accessible challenges? Like, what, how do you see the balance? Hmm. It's a good question. I think, um, like... Elitism is not like a, a term I, I, I like so, a, a lot. It's, it's nice to have art challenges. I like to see people having difficult, di like spending a lot of time on difficult challenges and, and have a, a, no, a good nosebleed on a reverse and everything. I think like that's super important. It's part of Nordsec's DNA to have like very difficult challenges. But I think accessibility is the path to, that makes like people like me that sucks at CTF uh, be like interested and involved and become more part of the community. So. Uh, we do try to have the more, the more and more challenges that are uh, accessible to like more beginner, that are more beginner friendly. And I think overall the CTF we want it to evolve in a way where you you could like if you're really here for the elite and like competition and be super serious, we want it to be. To, to I mean, we want we want you to be able to say that you're here for fun and that we're able to like give you more hints or like uh, coach you a little more about C CTFs and everything. Uh, without really enduring the real competition that's happening behind it. Interesting, insightful. Thank you. Um, uh, Emil, I will ask you to step aside and we'll have Amandine uh, Gagnon Hébert yeah. uh, who will take your seat. No, no, tu t'en vas, bouge d'une place. Like in a talk show, man, have you ever watched TV? That's how no. like they rotate in, uh, during the ad, unfortunately. Hey, Amandine, thank you for being here. Hey, am I late? Because I know that someone, like, they run after me, like, you're asked for, uh, Olivier asked for you on stage, but I, I, I'm too busy for, be, for being here, so, but it's I'm okay. Here because, okay. I'll take, I'll take 15 minutes of your time, five minutes talking. Um, no worries. So, Amandine, you are our v Vice President of Engagement and Outreach. Am I? Y yes. Okay. Um, you, uh, so you, uh, okay, the question is, how does one go from a PhD in psychology to be becoming a full-time pen tester, OSCP certified, all while maintaining clinic clinical practice with you? I don't know, man. I don't even know if I sleep. No, I sleep very well. I think that uh, the, the, the secret for this is uh, just being a, a, a good time manager, you know, and prioritize things that you want to do. For example, uh, NordSec this year uh, and the, the year before. Uh, I don't have time to be here, but I'm here anyway. So I missed some shift at the DPG for being here. So uh, kids uh, <laughs> are, are not my priority wow. today, but uh, uh, yeah. So I think just setting priority is my best. Uh, I think I have a, a ADHD too, so I'm just like always doing something. And but I don't know, I'm passionate about what I do. But you've been with us for two years, yeah. which means that the ADHD, ADHD, uh, ADHD. You, don't, you don't know psychology, man. I don't, ADHD. I, I don't. ADHD. ADHD, <laughs> yeah. sorry. So it, it, it's still, like, you're still with us after two years, so it means yeah. that uh, this community is doing something right for you, is it? I don't know. No. <laughs> no, absolutely. I love uh, being part of the community. I have a, uh, an extent background in being involved in what I do. And uh, I love the... the que les, que, on peut se parler en français un petit peu? Un petit peu, ouais. oui, hein? Bilingual. Bon. Euh, j'aime que euh, l'ouverture de la communauté d'InfoSec, j'aime le fait que je me retrouve avec des gens d'horizons variés et non qui ont été euh, tous... Euh, qu on, on a des parcours divers comparativement au milieu académique, c'est ce que j'apprécie le plus. Euh, je suis rentrée ici, je sais même, j ai, j ai, comme... Je n'avais jamais participé avant en tant que participante, avant de devenir responsable. Fait que l'année passée, peut-être que ça ne paraissait pas, mais je ne savais absolument pas ce que je faisais. Je disais les, aux gens quoi faire alors que, 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 que j'avais l'air confiante, mais euh, peut-être que j'ai « fuck it up ». 
Il y a, y a une savait. photo de toi très confiante là, dans le slide deck vers la fin. Là. Absolument. Fait que ça a été une découverte extraordinaire. Je rencontre des gens. Euh, je suis sociale à peu près euh, 14 jours par année. Et c'est durant Nordstack. Après ça, je vais dans mon terrier. Mais c'est le moment où je me donne vraiment beaucoup pour rencontrer des gens puis euh, connecter avec, euh, avec, avec nos amis, quoi. Yes. Hey, ouais. Merci. Belle, belle réponse. Ouais. Fait que là, maintenant, ma dernière question, comment on fait pour faire d'autres petites amandines? C'est quoi le... Qu'est-ce que toi, tu conseillerais aux, aux jeunes qui veulent s'impliquer? Genre, ben pour, quel chemin prendre? Pour faire des amandines, il faut un DEP en boulangerie. <rire> Pourquoi je ne suis pas surpris? C'est comme le parcours le plus... Ouais. Euh, comment faire? Je ne sais pas. Moi, je, je... ça va être cheesy ce que je veux dire, mais genre, je ne recommande pas... Tu sais, parce que j'incarne beaucoup quand je parle la performance. Puis les gens sont comme, « Oh my God, tu fais beaucoup de choses. » tu... Mais pour moi, c'est un équilibre de vie d'être à la fois en infosec et en psychologie parce que je switch de domaine tout le temps et j'ai besoin de me changer l'esprit. Donc, quand je suis ici, je ne pense pas à mes enfants de la DPJ, je ne pense pas à la psychologie clinique. Et l'inverse est aussi vrai. Quand je suis en psychologie, je ne pense pas à devenir domaine admin. On s'entend? <rire> Ce n'est pas... Les, mes priorités sont ailleurs. Il y en a pour qui euh, se, se, se reposer, c'est faire du jardinage, c'est jouer aux échecs, c'est faire du vélo. Il y en a pour qui c'est jouer aux jeux vidéo. And all, all that things are right, you know. <rire> Mais pour moi, comme c'est deux carrières que je, 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 comme je run en parallèle, puis euh, c'est ma façon de trouver mon équilibre de vie, là. Right, voilà. C'est bon, c'est bon. Comment faire pour faire d'autres amandines? Je ne sais pas. Tu demanderas à mes parents biologiques. Je n'ai aucune idée. Ben, en, en fait, <rire> j'espère que ton histoire va en inspirer d'autres. Elles, 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 elles auront leur propre ouais. DEP, leur propre chemin. Mais oui, euh, je pense que c'est une inspiration pour la future génération. Puis s'impliquer, honnêtement, je le recommande à tous. Pas là, je vais avoir un priori pour Nordtech. Impliquez-vous pour Nordtech, s'il vous plaît. Mais euh, impliquez-vous aussi ailleurs dans la communauté, que vous soyez à Trois-Rivières, que vous soyez euh, n'importe où. Partez des initiatives parce que c'est payant, euh, payant en tabarouette. Là. Euh, pour le nombre que, de connexions que tu te fais de rencontres que tu peux faire, de capacités que tu peux développer en faisant ça, euh, faire des nouvelles découvertes. Euh, ça demande du temps, on est fatigué, on ne dort pas, mais c'est très... Euh, la reconnaissance est là. là. Je suis trop fatigué pour parler en anglais. Je suis désolée à tous ceux qui parlent en anglais. Mais... Ils n'auront pas compris ce qu'il y Absolument. Mais, euh, mais merci beaucoup. Je merci. vous inviterai à vous. Uh, step uh, un side. Merci. Euh, je vais maintenant appeler Sawira. Sawira, can you come up on stage, please? Sawira is a former CTF participant that is now part of the outreach team. Oh, microphone. Someone's sitting on a microphone. Don't we have four microphones? Hello. Are we missing a microphone? No, I think Sawira is here. Oh, I am? You are sitting on the... No, I'm on this side. We're out. Oh. Ah, yeah, here we go. Uh, <laughs> All right, thank you, Sariwa. So, yeah, I was saying former CTF participant, now uh, outreach team. So, you're a seasoned threat researcher. You presented earlier today, gave workshops in earlier years, and are part of the outreach teams. I found on LinkedIn that you did a bachelor's degree in BC. It's a loaded question. Um, what convinced you to move to Montreal? And how did you discover NordSec? Um, what convinced me? Smoke meat. Smoke meat? Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, oh, well, it was actually like I got a job opportunity. I could work as a contractor at Google. And so I made the move. And I was like, why, why not? East, East Coast, you know, it's just cold, French. What could go wrong? <laughs> And I'm still here, <laughs> somehow. Yes. Well, that's that's an amazing story. Yeah, we should clap for that. All right. Um, so, in 2018, Nordsec had a sudden death. The two first places of the CTF had accumulated the same number of points. So, first place and second place were equal. We had to make a decision on who wins. P 
Pierre-Marc Bureau created a reverse engineering challenge at the last minute. And you were on stage with Zach Deveau, who is here, uh, from GOATS, facing another team doing live reverse engineering. Like, how can you go through that amount of pressure? <laughs> you don't. <laughs> yeah, you just don't. <laughs> I think if Zach was not there, I would probably be more frozen. <laughs> um, it was it was fun. It was it was weird. I don't think I'll ever do that again. But uh, yeah, it was fun. It was fun to win the point. <laughs> you did win, yes. Yeah. Um, and it was my first CTF. So yeah. For us, like for us organizers, this is a key moment in NorthSec history that we wish we would have filmed. It's like something unbelievable happened. We were wondering what to do. We had we thrown ideas. And at some point, one of the team thought that they got it. But then Pierre Mac verified and it was not okay. But you guys kept going on and then you got the actual real flag. I was like, oh my God, this is so much pressure. And I'm in the audience. So congrats on that. Uh, do you remember any of it, or is it just like a blur? Uh, I think it was a <laughs> Linux ELF file. It was RC Foki. Uh, Zach had Radari open. I didn't do anything. I just stared. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might have a side anecdote uh, about okay, this. Okay, apparently not through. I blanked out that memory. So yeah. I, I, we did realize afterward, after after the sudden death happened and everything, oh, and I'm, everybody might remember this for the people that were involved. But we did realize that one of the teams that were involved in the sudden death did not submit the rules flag. <laughs> and. With that flag. The losing team didn't submit the rules flag. Like, it would have been over before it even started. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> All right, la last question for you. Well, actually, you know I'm always doing, like, double questions or whatnot. But what would you describe as the biggest challenge working on the outreach team? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I guess um, biggest challenge, uh, maybe... Seeing a lot more, I don't know, uh, like women type run workshops. I guess I'm really bad at this. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's a bit more, a bit challenging. And it's also I find uh, I don't know if it's only like in Montreal. I find there's not as many women that you see attending workshops, and it's trying to like get them involved in it and just creating a space for that. But to see more women. Uh, yeah. It's difficult. <laughs> yeah. All right. But good job trying to achieve the difficult. So uh, we, uh, I realized I uh, miscalculated. We have a chair problem that I'm going to smoothly handle like this. Uh, I'm going to call on stage Serge Olivier Paquette, who will take my chair. And do we have another microphone? Do we have another microphone? We don't even, can we or, uh, get one for the next 15 minutes? But for now, we'll just borrow one from, uh, from Emil, from the overexposed people. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So, Serge, <laughs> maybe we'll keep it like that. We have another chair, yes. but uh, we'll you, see. You want to sit on my lap? Uh, oh, yeah, we could do that. <laughs> Strong enough. So, Serge, don't read the questions. <laughs> so, Serge, uh, what were the challenges of your tenure? You delivered 2022 and 2021 as president. Yes, after a couple of years as logistics. I there's one big thing that happened. I don't know if people remember when people were coughing and uh, were staying home. That was quite a challenge as a president. <laughs> Keeping people together motivating them to come back and spend some time when everyone was in depression, that was something. Yeah, well, you handled that very well. I'm unco uncomfortable, sorry. Um, uh, We're too close. You, uh, no, but you handled that very well, but people, yeah, of course, don't want to remember COVID, and I had other questions about it. So uh, <clears throat> um, can you tell us something about each panelist here with us? A story or something you've learned from them? Hmm. 
The screen is oh. black. Uh oh. Um, Amandine uh, really loves trottinette. Can we? Do you want a demonstration? I don't have my scooter right now. Um, Emil loves a snowboard, so we're in the team of uh, being on uh, something that uh, glides. And Pass, um, I have no clue about Sawira. I know very little about Sawira, unfortunately. <laughs> so uh, she doesn't mind the cold of Montreal and loves smoked meat. All right. Uh, okay, la last questions for the bunch. Uh, you have a math background. You work in software engineering, data science, machine learning. I was told that you had imposter syndrome on your way to become North Six president. Can you talk about it? I still do. <laughs> But I learned to cope with it, and I learned that everybody does also, even those that don't look like they do. And it's something to celebrate. It's something everybody... So the reason they go on stage is because they became the best fucking in the world in their domain. Of course you don't know as much as them. So it's perfectly fine to not understand what the hell they're talking about. Just listen, grasp what you can, and be the best in, the, in your domain at some point in life. And so that's it. And that's what I, I became... I came to enjoy that feeling of being surrounded by people that are so much better at me at so many things. And it's just something to celebrate. And then the re one of the reasons NordSec is beautiful. Yeah, good job. All right. So I'll ask everyone to leave the stage, and then we'll go with this, the next era. We're going from recent years towards uh, oldest years. And I'm taking a lot of time, I realize. So uh, I'll have to pick up the pace. I would like uh, Florencia to come up on stage. Florencia. Hello. Hello. It's so, very uh, exposed. What? It's weird. Okay. It's weird? Yeah. It's, I mean, come on, you did stage time before? Yeah, but, but not in a chair. I don't know. It's weird. Anyway. <laughs> Then, are you the one who organized the, the panels, the uh, format? The uh, I the never sat in them, though. It's yeah. completely different. So now you yeah, feel yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, now, now I'm so suddenly I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Florencia needs no int introduction. She's been running the conference for the last four or five years and started the year after Pierre David started it. So Pierre David just did like a napkin project and then Florencia delivered an actual event conference. Um, uh, so you were tasked with this big and vague request of making a generalist cybersecurity event tied to a CTF uh, and making it diverse. So the question is, how did you approach this? Um, uh, just trying a lot of things and seeing what sticks. I think the, the trouble with being a generalist conference is no matter, like you, you're just, you're constantly kind of trying to catch up with yourself. You're like, oh, we got a lot of applications from people in reversing. Now we got to chase after blue team people. Um, so a lot of that, just a lot of chasing, uh, I guess, running after people that we think are interesting, watching. Uh, conference talks from other conferences and, and doing our best, especially to try to um, look for diverse speakers, which is not that easy. And then, you know, you just have to hope that they actually will apply when you ask them to. Great answer. Um, I, would, uh, I would like you, we, we kind of have an opportunity here to describe the call for paper process in a laid back fashion. We never actually did a blog post about it or whatever, because it's It's a lot of little things, right? And, and you ask anyone on the, on the committee how it works, and they will say slightly different things. So I would like to have your view of, our, of NordSec's CFP process. Like, how does it work? So we have two, or at times we've had three rounds of submissions. And that the reason for the, the two rounds is that we try to get hype when we announce the first round of speakers. And also because we do want to kind of target The, the later rounds. So as an example, yeah, you know, we get a lot of applicants uh, who are red teamers. Then in the second round, we want to kind of balance that out and we want to kind of make that all work. Um, but the way it works is we have this uh, open source tool that we use and people submit uh, their applications, which includes, you know, whatever they want to talk about. 
um, full description, any materials that are related to what they're proposing, and um, bio, et cetera. And then we have a committee of, I want to say it's like six-ish people. Um, it varies from year to year uh, that will go through and vote on what, you know how they feel about the proposal. So we do that. Uh, it's not fully blinded at this point, but uh, we we do not see each other's votes. So everyone votes, and then we uh, afterwards we we kind of look at all of um, what how everyone voted, and we discuss the ones that are uh, that have high votes or medium votes, and then debate, and then kind of pick, and then try to make it all work. So we use Trello to kind of arrange it all and see if, if the, the total program makes sense. Does that, does that cover it? That's perfect. I'm going to clip this, and we're going to put it on our website or YouTube or whatever. It's so uh, much less time than writing a blog post. Great, great answer. I, thank you, Flo. I'll, I'll ask you to sit on the side, uh, leave the mic, and we'll uh, call on stage Eric Boivin. Eric Boivin. Hello. C Scenario lead is the title, I think, you are attributed. Yeah, game master, scenario designer, something like that. So what is the job of a scenario lead except YAML? <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly YAML, but yes. Um, the job is to take the, the technical challenges of every challenge designer and then to wrap it up into the entire NordSec team. Because you know, this is an event that is, it's not only the CTF, there's the conference, there's all the, the swag that you see, the t-shirts, there are the badges. The team is everywhere in NordSec. So my job is to first come up with an idea, then work with the challenge designers to make up that idea, to create like an entire universe based on their challenges. So it's, it's all about taking their challenges, building a universe around it, and then wrapping it up so that when participants go into the CTF, they can see a real experience. They can see something that is cohesive, that is not just, oh, this is an SQL injection. This is a reverse challenge. It's a world that you're a part of and you're building a part of that story. So, something like that. Do people even realize half of that, or? Uh... <laughs> uh, I would say, maybe not. I, I know there's a lot of people that are very competitive, and all of these messages, they don't care. It's just, uh, this is noise, we don't care, give me the URL and I'll go to it. But when you're building the signature of an image, the, the team in NordSec is everything. Like the audio that you hear, the visuals that you see, the t-shirts that volunteers. So in the end, that creates an, an event that is interesting. So this is why I think, even if the participants don't understand the, whole, the big picture, they can see all and the color that we're putting into it. And I find that absolutely fascinating. All right, I'm gonna ask a trick question. Which theme was your favorite so far? Uh, oh, this is, yeah. They, each year, they are my babies. Some babies are more troublesome to put into life. Uh, <laughs> some babies, they do what their- What do you know about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, some of them are very challenging, but I would say my, the one I'm the, the proudest of is North Sectoria, where we did an entire CTF about medieval cybersecurity. It was so wild. Um, I've never seen, like cyberpunk is easy. It's part of our culture, us in InfoSec. But medieval cybersecurity, that doesn't exist. So yeah, I would say the opportunity that I have working in that event and creating crazy stuff like that is absolutely amazing. So I thank you all for, for that. I, you, you just mentioned it and I have this song in my head. Yeah, yeah, the little whistle and uh, yeah. All right, um, about this year's theme, any surprises left or hints? Uh, to be honest, um, this year's team was supposed to be last year's team. So um, <laughs> we were not sure last year what we would do with NordSec. So last year's theme was 
pretty much build up quickly so that because we we found out that oh yeah we can hold an uh, in person event so it was really last minute so what you're seeing this weekend is Put yourself back in May 2022. What was the life that we were seeing as a society coming out of COVID? So this is the, the kind of ambience I had in mind back then. But now this year, with all that change, all the things that, that have happened, things like the um, democratization of AI, that's something big that has happened this year. So you will see little hints about that that couldn't have happened last year. So this is why using current events into the theme is something that I absolutely love. Thank yeah. you. No, so no surprise, no hint, no reveal, no like, I want insider, juicy. Um, we didn't rehearse this, clearly. No. Juicy. Leak uh, something, man. Oh, Peer pressure. Me. Okay, um, I, I will leak. Uh, he will leak. So, you know, um, there's, uh, there's a lot of iconography that is very weird, very Illuminati, very mystical. Well, keep that in mind. In everything that we've written, in the end, there's this mystical power structure that is controlling everything. Challenge designers might not see it, but you will feel the weirdness. And uh, yeah, I can't, I can't wait to talk about you all about what we've created. Uh, challenges this year are especially uh, good, and the integration with the team this year is uh, absolutely great, so it's an honor to showcase that this week. Excellent. So, uh, please, if you may please step aside. I'm going to invite Danny to come up on stage. We were speaking about sound and music earlier, and so Danny is a sound designer and DJ for NordSec, which is uh, something I, we, I think we should promote more, our art, the connection we are trying, and we're not good at it, but the connection we're trying to have with art and sound and music. Um, so, uh, Danny, you did a live DJ live stream on Twitch for NordSec 2020 at the peak of the pandemic when we were in lockdown. How was this experience? Like from your garage? I remember like drinking in front of my screen with like being on Discord with the other buddies and listening to the music and having fun. What a weird, weird time that was. Um, and I was just shocked by the amount of fun that I had uh, because we had all been in our holes. And then the idea of like, we can't do North Sec. And I see Flo freaking out and we can't do North Sec. And then it's like, no, we can, we can pull it off. We can pull it off digitally. But having been here before and seen the vibe in this room when people are doing the CTF, to imagine the CTF without that vibe was heartbreaking but then to be able to contribute in some way to create some kind of unifying thing where like where people are listening to the same music and they're kind of sharing that same spot um, honestly i like i felt it and it was it was a joyful thing to do were you like uh, looking at the chat at the same time absolutely. or yeah okay yeah, yeah. Absolutely. so in between tracks uh, adding yes 100%. So, um, uh, uh, before doing so and after doing so, you also designed the sound atmosphere. Yeah. So, I might, I don't recall exactly, but I remember, like, it started in 2019 because we, we needed royalty-free music for our, our, our pauses and our stream. Yeah. And then the Severity High in 2020, we're already planning at a DJ, so... I think you did some sound for us. And I, um, am I wrong saying the medieval is yes. your stuff? Yeah. So this is your yeah. stuff. <laughs> and we might have a surprise for this year. <clears throat> uh, and uh, so what is uh, the process of creating a sound atmosphere? Um, well, you get really, really weird prompts, like <laughs> medieval hold music <laughs> or like, uh, you, you know, you all heard the leak today. The leak was it's going to feel weird. <laughs> so, you know, getting, getting a prompt like that is honestly just like the most, like it's my idea of fun, <laughs> is being like, okay, we need basically filler music, but, <laughs> 
you know, here's a twist or two. And uh, I think it, uh, it infuses art into the tech vibe that we have here. And honestly, like, you know, you can get, you can get hold music royalty free, for free on the internet very easily. But you could also, like, if you really need a name tag, you know, you can get paper from the dollar store and write your names on it. But, like, NorthSec clearly feels the need to have these badges. <laughs> <laughs> the blinking stuff. Exactly. And so I just feel like that's kind of the, the, the spirit of this event is kind of like, let's go over the top, let's bring it together, uh, let's contribute our own favorite kind of weird. And uh, little hold music is how I get to the little, how I get to feel important and sit on this. If, if stage. I may, there, there's, a, there's a saying that I really like um, uh, restriction breeds creativity. Is yeah. that when you're giving like limits, this is when the mind can go and fly. So this is why working with, with the set and working with, with her, like the, the prom for this year was so weird and it, the delivery was amazing. I can't wait for you all to hear how I think it you played today. I think it played today. Oh, yeah, it played. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually nice, nice. played at some point, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, this is for the conference, right? When we have pauses. Did it play today? Uh, do you guys know? Oh, it played in room B today. Yeah. So in track track B, room track two, room B. We call it many different names. Salle de Bal is the website's name. Um, yeah, I would like. I made some room. I would like to invite the president of that era, or representing that era, Pierre David, on stage. <laughs> Can can someone? Pong micro. No. All right. I'm gonna sit there. You can do like surge, but I'm getting older, so there's nah, much I'm less not, material I, 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 to work with. Nah, I'm not doing that. All right. I'm gonna be right here. Yeah. Uh, do don't, that. don't look. Don't move. move. <laughs> All right. But I mean, this is very minimalist cue card. Um, so you were president during 2019 and 2020 tenures. Yep. Uh, what were the challenges of your presidency? I don't know. Something that ends with 19. Oh, <laughs> another COVID, COVID president. Yeah, I can count. That's a good story. So um, how, how this happened, right? So remember, everybody, put yourself back in your shoes early March 2020, right? Early March. Ah, this is, you know, hearing about things back in happening in Asia, you know. Whatever, it's all like a, a flu, right? It's all like, ah, you know, we've seen that. And so um, we're having an event on site, in person. Everything is lined up. Everything's going to be awesome. We got badges ordered, like, you know, a 1,000 of these, a 1,500 of these, like 70 grand, right? All in. And, uh, you know, I'm riding with, uh, with my company. We actually have an outing. We don't do skiing, you know, in, uh, in Charlevoix, right? And so uh, we're riding there, and uh, you know, Mr. Francois Legault, the Prime Minister of Quebec, announces that, well, you know, this is on us, right? You know, things are happening, and so we, you can't have any gathering indoors more than 250 people, right? Live, when we're freaking riding, you know, on the highway, like on the 20, and then, um, so we stop at a place, and um, this is where you gotta make tough decisions, right? Because <clears throat> if you make the wrong decision, you're losing the badges and stuff like that, right? You're losing 70 grand, right? You're, there's a company in China that is supposed to be doing some things for you, and you've already paid some amount of money. And so, um, you know, we had lunch. I don't even remember what I ate, what happened, <laughs> where, in what restaurant we had lunch. It had lots of screens. That's all I remember, because like logo was on all these screens. And uh, it, was, it was probably an Ashton. No, it was an Ashton. I don't, they don't have lots of screens, but, you know, whatever. It was. And so, yeah, we had to pull the plug on the badges, that meaning we, we were pulling the plug on the event, right? We, meaning we were pulling the plug on the physical happening of the event, right? Uh, March 11th, right? So, like, two days before everything was, like, Quebec was canceled, basically. Like, the entirety of the <laughs> province was, like, indoors, you know, fuck you, and that's it. So, um... <laughs> Yeah, so this I, is a live stream, by the way. Yeah, yeah. So, well, it's you know, there's a you know, there's an LLM on Google stuff that is going to cancel this out. So they're very good. And so, um, uh, yeah, so I had to, I had to, I had to call, call the the badge folks and say, 
well, you know, how much money do we, do we owe this, this company? All right, let's just cancel all that. And so pull the plug, pull the badges, and call an emergency meeting while I was in a, in a chalet, you know, in, in like a, a Bé Saint Paul. <laughs> and call an emergency meeting. And initially, honestly, initially, my, my decision was, you know, the, as a president, you got to make the responsible choice, right? You got to be the adult in the room, right? You, we've got crazy ideas, crazy concepts, so you have to make the right choice. And so as a president, my initial decision was like, oh, well, we'll just cancel it, right? It'll be easier for everyone. But I, as a president, you don't, um, in a volunteer organization, you don't rule by authority, right? That's a, a trick you learn over time is, you know, none of the people here that are volunteering are paid. You don't have any authority. So you have your idea, but you kind of you know, have to see, you know, feel the room. The first initial feeling of the room, of the entire organizing committee at that time was, we'll just do it online. We'll just do it online. I was like, all right, let's do it online. You know, let's not cancel it. Let's, uh, let's be the, the first, you know, March, March 12th, you know. Uh, let's do it online. And so uh, the entire team switched to put it online. It was, it was, it was crazy, and I had sent countless emails. Uh, we received a lot of, um, I wouldn't call this, uh, you know, not threats, but, you know, people weren't too happy about us. March 12th, remember that, March 12th, shipping it online. You know, people were like, ah, oh, you're, you know, you're making this, uh, you know, what it's not. You know, it's, you're way too intense. It's just a flu, you know, it's gonna, it, by, you know, by, by May, it's all gonna be done, right? It's gonna be done and over with, ah, you know. And so, yeah, you know, hindsight 2020, uh, we still made the right decision, so I, but that was, that's the story. So I uh, had to call the, you know, pull the plug on, I don't know, 70, 80 grand. Got a, got a, got a message from Mauser, you know, where we had, like, I don't know, 20 grand of stuff ordered there. Are you sure you want to call? You know, it's, uh, you know, we, uh, what, what's happening? You know, you want to you wanna cancel a 20 grand order? What's the problem, you know, <laughs> in COVID? So, yeah, that was quite a story. Sorry I took a lot of time to... Uh, yeah, by the way, time's up for you. But... That's it. <laughs> This is what people will rem remember you for. Yeah. No, 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 no. Pierre David is behind many, many interesting initiatives. But anyway, I didn't have anything prepared. And we're going to move to the next era, the last Woo! era, because food is ready and it's waiting. So four more guests and then uh, we're, we're good. Um, I'm going to call up on stage Geneviève La Jeunesse. I see her in the back. So, Gen Geneviève is our uh, CFP, uh, on the CFP and has been for a long time. Uh, yeah, a long time. So she's part of the OGs, uh, not OGs, but almost like the earliers of the, of the crew. More, more in the stale people in the CFP. No, I don't mean that. I really don't mean that. But I think it's great that we're getting new people in the CFP. Yeah. <laughs> and you also uh, launched or spearheaded the, the community room, which uh, we're still unsure about calling community room and villages, but... Yeah, so about this, I want to say, you know, I'm in the face of it right now, but I, Martin, right there at the back, right in the alley, hello, dude. You know, it's, it's a common shared vision by a lot of people within the organization community. It certainly isn't like a one-person thing at all. And, you know, Jean-Philippe co-VP this year, thank you, because otherwise none of this would be there. <laughs> yeah. Obviously. But so, uh, yeah, I guess we went through the intro. Um, the, so can you, like, there's, there's this thing, it's a new object, and now we have the opportunity to explain it to everyone, right, with more than a couple of words. Uh, how would you talk about the community room? How would you describe it? So... To any conference you go, you'll get the opportunity to experiment things you've never tried, right? But what we wanted to do was to do a little bit more than this, right? So it's cool, you go to this room and you get to learn soldering if you've never done it or something like this, yay, yay. But, but it's that yay, it's that moment where you're also learning, you know, what's in your environment. Oh, I have this, no, there's this maker space in my community and I could go there or someone else is passionate about climate change and now it intersects with, with, with in the InfoSec. And so it's having that space to build those connections and not consider, you know, you're not in a talk, so, you know, nosebleed, brain activity. It's not just about having a break. It's about learning to engage and make this like, you know, you're here, you're passionate about InfoSec, you're passionate about technology. 
it's a whole of life thing for you? Well, can we enrich that? Can we connect that to other things? And, we, and can we connect that to things that are a little bit lateral, right? If we were, people were, you know, in computer science and the very, you know, straightforward thing about it, we would go one way. But being creative helps us in our work. It helps us see things a little bit differently. So you need to kind of enrich that with a bunch of things that may or may not seem like they belong. Because this is how you find out where you, as an individual, belong, and also how you can include more people into this. Because otherwise, you know, we'll, we'll keep doing things the same way, and we'll repeat the same mistakes. So it's kind of meta, like it, you know, how you learn a thing that isn't what you learn easily helps you learn better things and more things. And that's that space, in essence. And also, you know, I really, really, really like puzzles, so, you know. Puzzles so everywhere. Are. Life is a CTF. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so how would you, like, uh, I, I think a CFP is very well formatted, and people understand what the contract is. You know, you do a pitch, basically, and then it's rated, and you get accepted. But so the, the process, obviously, for a community room needs to be more uh, uh, handled. How, how, like, let's say yeah. someone has an idea, and and is unsure if it's a good idea or not, how, what would you recommend them do? Yeah, so that's a, a thing we're looking to build, right? The more we do community room, the more people know what it is, and then you're like, okay, I love sailing, and I'd love to explain how this works, and now, you know, this will become more real as years go by. I'd say the number one thing is just throw yourself in the pool. You don't need to be a group of people. You can be one person, two people, and come in with an idea, and... It, we won't, like, when you, when you submit to the CFP, we judge you, right? We want this to be watertight. We want this to be perfect. For community response, if you're thinking about something that could work or may not, or you would do it, but it's expensive and you don't have the resources to do it, or you would do it, but you know someone would be far better than you at this, but you just want for it to exist, then, you know, talk to us. And the thing is, CFP is great for talks, because a talk, you know, you, you sit down, you write it out, and you're good. But for these types of things, it can take a longer time, right? You're building this out. Well, maybe we need to talk in the summer. So what I'd say is, you know, you're all on Discord. I'm Denki with many eyes at the end on Discord. Like, reach out. Let's just chat. You know, there's, there's, if it's a bad idea, I will tell you. My, I spend my days <laughs> having bad, uh, bad ideas. I have a lot of experience in them. So don't, don't worry about it. You won't face me. I, I have worse ideas than you do, I'm sure. So that's what I would say. Um, yeah, so there will be, as every year, there's a CFP period. But don't, don't have this stop you, you know. And if CFP is closed and your idea just came, talk to us. It's, you know, we're in a huge space, and even if we were to go elsewhere, I don't see us going into a smaller thing. I haven't seen NordSec get smaller at all. So, so don't be too concerned about that. What I would be concerned about is staying silent, right? If you went to the room today and were like, oh, I wish, I wish they had this. Like, come to us. This is, you know, there's a hacker spirit, break things, you know, void the warranty, do all those things. There's also the maker spirit, like, get it done. Get, get it done. Take it. Do it. No one's going to stop you. Social engineer your way into a better world. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding, but I mean, like, like, pick it up for real because we only have so many hands. And, you know, we, we, we will truly love your implication into this. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm seeing my daughter come in. There's another thing I want to say also. Like, it's not just for what's in front of you. It's also to articulate things. Like, maybe, you know, I'm, I'm grinning at the temples. Like, if there's things you used to see in hacker cons and you no longer see, it's culture. We need to keep our culture alive. So bring it. Yep. <laughs> That's a great, great answer. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch question last minute because uh, I was going for the other one, but I, I, I'll take this one. As a parent, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> See what I'm going? <laughs> uh, with a successful professional career, involved in NordSec at, at the vice president's level, mm -hmm. um, with limited time, like how do you manage your time Club. and advice for people who are inspired by by this? Club Mate? No, um, <laughs> no, no. The, the the real answer, the real answer is like it. 
you do something every day. I, and it's the same for my learning. I have, you know, if it's going to be 15 minutes, I look at my week, I'm like, ugh, this is going to be tough. But you create those habits and you stick to it. The, um, there's no, you know, there's no sugarcoating it. There's times in the year where it's like, it is a lot, but it feeds you. And I guarantee you, if you're focusing on the mundane stuff that you feel you have to get done all the time, it just drags you down. But if you focus on the things that feed you and build you up, yeah, they're difficult. Like, but, but doing the difficult stuff is what makes it worthwhile, right? And if you're a parent, you know it. Like, there's a ton of the difficult stuff. You would never question that it's worthwhile at the end of the day. Hello, kid. I'm not getting woken up at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. Yay. Um, no, but I mean, like, the difficult stuff oftentimes ends up matching up with the stuff that is super worthwhile. And go for it. You know, like, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't think there's anything exceptional in the things I do other than I'm exceptionally driven to get them done. And it, keep, and it feeds me. Another great answer. Thank you. So, on va, tu vas déplacer d'une place. And we're going to have our next guest, uh, who needs no introduction, Laurent Desaunier. Hi. Hello. Uh, so, Laurent Desaunier is a challenge designer, <laughs> obviously. Uh, so, uh, a long time challenge designer. Are you, you're, what's the first year you designed challenges? Uh, the very, actually, the hacker. So, before, yeah, minus one, yes. Okay, okay. So, you, you, you didn't play in any NordSec. You were already challenge designer. Correct. All right. So, 10 years, 11 years challenge designer. Um, how many challenges do you think you have delivered in total, excluding trivias? Excluding trivias, I yeah. figure perhaps, let's say, six or seven per year. So I'd say roughly 77. All right, that's good. At, at an average of, of points, let's say a three points average, that would be, yeah, that would be, you're, you're like, uh, your career, your NordSec career is like a third of a, NordSec, a regular NordSec. <laughs> so the funny thing is, and that's amazing about NordSec, is the very first year we were very few. There was like, a, Charles Frédéric was doing some, and I was doing some, but, you know, individually, we did a pretty big part of the CTF, because we were like five, so if one of us messed up, it was 20% of the CTF. <laughs> no, for real. Nowadays, we're like 60. So it's amazing how much this is more reliable, how much we can rely on one another, and that's basically built on this community. So I am very thankful that I am a minute, minute, tiny part of NordSec now, since that there's so many great charge designers around. Um, what are your best stories around challenges? Anything comes up to mind? There were some amazing challenges. One I had, well, the personal one I had was, uh, I had a key grinding challenge, and people <laughs> brought Dremels and stuff, and it, well, there was like flying sparks all over, the security guy was super worried how come people were doing, that was pretty fun. There was a fabled uh, bag of chips, if you recall, that there was a vibrating sack of chips that you had to um, decode the word around that was really nice. Uh, there were some really cool challenges, but those two come to mind, actually. Um, I want you to elabor elaborate on your obsession about CAPTCHAs. <laughs> All right. So yes, I really, really like CAPTCHAs. I feel they're clever, they're a good way to um, bring different uh, AppSec challenges, and you can talk about crypto, about race conditions, about logic flaws, and nobody really cares about CAPTCHA in real life, but I am an enthusiast, some would say fanatic, and I really like to bring, uh, in 10 years I've done 14 CAPTCHA challenges, <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I really, really like CAPTCHAs. That's a hint for preparation if I ever heard one. <laughs> the funny thing is, one year, I keep uh, reading that story, the very first year, we had, you had to solve 500 CAPTCHA by hand. And the Lanetes 4 thing or, uh, team did it by hand. Like, they, had, they solved it. And it. Two people, it took them their whole weekend. Because if you messed it once, you had to start over. And it, we gave them a Python programming book as a gift. <laughs> Uh, that's another one, uh, another great story. Um, how would you describe the approach to designing a great challenge? So, 
I, I'm really thinking about this because it's super challenging because when, when you know the challenge, when you know the solution is obvious. So the rule now that we try is what to do should be very obvious, the how can be very hard. But never a in front of a challenge, you should, you should ask yourself, I have no idea what to do. For example, uh, in past years, I had a web app challenge that, you, that, that there was like one function called search. It was the very only input in the page. So anyone trying to hack a web page would say, gee, I have one input, I wonder which one should it be, right? So the idea is for it to make it as simple as possible on the what to do. And on the how, there were people having zero days in cryptography, like somehow were very, very difficult. Some challenges were pretty insane. Thank you. All right, I would like you to step oh, we'll aside shift. All right. for the next, uh, yeah, sh shift left, I guess, from our perspective. Uh, I would like to invite David Goulet on the stage. Whoop. Or as we affectionately <laughs> call him, Degoule. Um, so David is part of the infrastructure team now. He's a NorthSec contributor since inception, former VP of the CTF. Minus two. Uh, oh yeah, 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 exactly. That's the thing. So before NorthSec, Hackus existed. It's a different beast, but it, ha it, it shared a lot of, uh, of uh, common values and uh, people. Uh, so David was a founder, I think, of the Hackers. Um, okay, but that's a, a tangent. Um, is okay. My first question. I mean, I didn't do a bio. But I'm sorry. Okay, is it true that you are the one who introduced the scooters? Uh, yeah, I think at some point I was really sick of walking uh, <laughs> over and over again, and yeah, we we did. Uh, I did ask for for the for the, the small scooters, and actually Kevin, which was the our, you know, with us at that time, went to buy three of them, and they were forty pound maximum scooter, <laughs> <laughs> a very small green, and we still have one working ten years later. So why are they necessary? Like for people who don't. Build Nordsec. Oh well, we we I mean we, you've seen the size of these rooms. We go over and over again, and we oh we forgot the cutter, we forgot the we forgot this this gizmo, blah blah blah. We run wires, not only that, but uh, in these years, the late the the, the last couple of years, uh, almost everything is Wi-Fi. But before that, we had to run you know hundreds of wires, uh, and so the scooters became you know instrumental in our livelihood. All right, so it's not just for to roam around looking cool, right? It's not that, that hacker movie style longboard <laughs> shit. Uh, no, not at all, not at all. It has a practical side to it. It is a true story. Um, so can you talk about Hackers? Like, what, what is it for people who don't know? So uh, long story short, uh, 12, 30, it was in 2009. Uh, we... Uh, a couple of friends of mine, uh, I don't think they're in the room right now, but we went to this uh, contest. It was uh, created by the CRIM, the Centre de Recherche... La Boule de Cristal. La Boule de Cristal, there you go. Centre de Recherche Informatique de Montréal. Uh, and they created this contest, and uh, the entire point of this contest, I think, was to bring uh, people from different universities and college and uh, expose them to cybersecurity. And at the end, there were this uh, bunch of private corporations trying to hire us. And uh, I think that was the whole idea. So we had some fun, but not really. So <laughs> we ended up talking on the way back because we were studying at Sherbrooke, in the University of Sherbrooke, which is an hour and uh, almost two hours from here. And uh, we just like, maybe we could do something better than this. Maybe we could have like, more fun, introduce some new concept, uh, existing concept like the Acre Jeopardy that you know, has been existing in DEF CON for a long time, and CCC. Uh, and so we, we were three at that time, and we started uh, um, discussing a few couple of weeks later. We created Ack Us, which is Ack Us, is a very clever thing, you know, Ack Us, you know, get it? Okay. <laughs> But also at University of Sherbrooke, so uh, US, uh, UNS. And um, we started this, and the first edition was thrown in 2010 with 67 people. And I was actually in the cafeteria of the, the university, and actually it was pretty fun. It was indeed, I remember. Uh, we were playing with Amish security back then, having lots of fun. 
Um, so what motivates you to keep giving a considerable amount of, of time to NordSec after 11 years plus hackers plus the one year off? It means like it's 15 years career contributing, not for a, as a player, but as a giver, a builder of worlds for others. Uh, I mean, it's pretty fun. Uh, a lot of people came before here that says that, you know, they meet people. Uh, and it just actually, it's very true. We meet a lot of people. It's extremely fun, the logistics of it. But there's one thing that is uh, very, very cool for me is, and I used to do that. I don't do that anymore, but it was the challenge designer. And through eight months of work, you do this challenge. It comes to and it becomes a thing that you polish, that you love, that you ate and everything. And then for two days, people go at it. And that is the most amazing experience ever because then you have so much fun looking at people sweating, enjoying. And, and so that is a big driver for me and for a lot of challenge designers. So I encourage everyone here that wants to do challenge to actually join the team. Uh, but apart from that, why am I still doing this and not the challenge? Uh, I think it's just fun, yeah, it's fun. Excellent. So it's time now to bring the last guest, the OG president, Gabriel Tremblay, come up on stage, please. Qui veut lui donner son micro? Merci. All right, Gabriel, you were president. I didn't realize just how long your tenure was before I wrote this. It's PTSD every time we speak. You were president from 2013 to 2018. Um, to ma maintain and create an event like this is a great accomplishment. So, what is NordSec's original idea? Idea, it's not an idea, but it's cool because David is there. Uh, short story long, <laughs> which is usually the inverse. Um, for, for the people who we were in there back in the days, we used to love doing cybersecurity, but we felt a bit alone. So um, we had this competition in Sherbrooke called Hack Us, where we would go, we would compete, and we would really succeed at it, uh, just to say. Um, and then the people that were competing with us, we were building team, and the team that was organizing back then the, the, uh, the, con the competition, we decided to get together and build a team to do international CTF, to go and do the DEF CON quals, to go do ICTF, and mo a lot of us met during these days. Um, but there was, <laughs> it's funny because we had, a, we had a good success back then, but we had a problem. We had difficulties recruiting new people because back then the amount of elite level security pen tester was kind of limited. And um, there was this, this competition in Sherbrooke that kind of, it, it did its time. It was in Sherbrooke. Uh, they had problem financing themselves. Is it? Yeah, it's fine. That's what happened. Um, <clears throat> so we were looking for ways to recruit more people. And we thought like, hmm, that would be nice if we built something in Montreal, like just a CTF, just to train people in what we were doing. It's, it's as stupid as that. So we decided to build a competition that would be as hard as the shit we were doing uh, on the international scene, which was like nose bleeding level at, back then. Um, so slowly but surely, we built that competition that was, I remember one of the, the first goal we gave ourselves was, you shouldn't be able to do all the flags. Like, it should be so hard that if you manage to do a flag or two, you, you had a good competition. Um, <laughs> so it, it, was, it was the basic idea because it was out of a need. That was the need. Um, so I went to the old people that were doing Hack Us, which stopped back then, and I said, why don't we move it to Montreal? Why don't we rename it? Why don't we rebuild the way it's done? Why don't we just change the way it's financed? And this is how literally NordSec came to be, as a way to become better at what we were doing. Yeah, great answer. <laughs> and so from there, how did you decide to grow from a CTF to a week-long event spanning training, conference, and CTF, what <laughs> I call today NordSex Festival. <laughs> so, uh, fun fact, 
being poor when you make an event sucks. Like, you have to make everything happen. And I, the first year, we had 5K as a budget. That was, that was the budget of the 5K? event. 5K? Yeah, that was $5,000. Five, $5, <laughs> uh, but the room was free at ETS, so, so fair enough. That was solved. Um, so we ran at, at least, I think, one year. And I, I, I told to myself and the guys, I said, and th it was only guys back then. Sorry about that. We weren't that good. Um, so I said, if we want to grow, we need money. And what's the best way to make money? Let's do a conference. <laughs> because, and that was it. That the idea was that the conference probably will be able to fund the CTF. And believe it worked. Like, we, uh, we recruited Pierre David back then, and we told him, like, you want to make a conference? Because we need money. <laughs> and he said, like, I can do that. And that's how it came to be. And a couple of years later, we had, we were here now. It was amazing. But we were still really poor. Like, we weren't able to do, like, crazy stuff like, like you see these days. So we went to see, I think it was you. And we told you, we need money. You want to do trainings? <laughs> and that's how training came to be, out of necessity. So training were meant to fund the conference so the conference could fund the competition. <laughs> yeah, that worked. <laughs> but that's pretty much how it came to be. So this is how the event grow, out of necessity to fund the CTF. So you talk, you, oh. yeah, go ahead, clap, clap, clap. So I have like, I guess, so we're, we're uh, short on time, uh, it's my fault. Um, but I have two angles here we can take, so you'll pick the one you like. We ta you talked about money already. So I don't know how much you want to talk about budgeting, but I know that we had, in the early days, we had some pretty guerrilla meeting about budget. And it's like, cut this for that, or more of that, less of that. And we were like arguing over stuff we cut or not. Um, do you want to talk about that, or do you want to get into the anecdotes? Uh, no, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go about budget. All right. <laughs> now anecdotes. All right, anecdotes. <laughs> anecdotes. All right. So uh, I have like, um, I, I mean, I have stuff that will just reveal the whole anecdote. You wanna, you wanna talk about that? Yes, but don't <laughs> name anyone. Go ahead. All right. So, so the fun thing is you look at this event and you look at all the people. They're sitting there. They look responsible because they've aged quite a, quite a lot <laughs> since, since we've started. But the beginning were kind of rough. Like, think about, like, the people that hangs in CTF, have too much beer, fight in bars. And, like, these, these people. So we're building an event. And I, I, would, I would say, like, because it's kind of going and, and I don't know, caresser le chat dans le bon sens. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's brilliant people do shitty shit. Like, this is what they do. Um, so we did the first, uh, first year of NordSec, and uh, we get to the hotel first night. We had an epic hacker jeopardy, like a thing that would be illegal today, because that's how things were back then. And not to do any apology, but it was we didn't know what we were doing, so it, it ended up in some ways. Um, and then we get a call from the hotel the next morning. Someone stole all our APs. Wireless access point. Yeah. Someone stole, stole all of the wireless antennas in the hotel. And they're like, we have them on camera. <laughs> <laughs> so either they bring them back, or we're going to call the cops. And we're like, oh, I know who is this. <laughs> we knew we were there. Like, the night would never end. So, these people were, uh, you know, it's, it's, we were part of it. We didn't steal it, but it was borrowed. The people, the people which we, we worked with were not, it was not as serious as it is today. So that was a, a, a good thing. I think we, we returned the AP. Nobody got arrested. <laughs> that was a good thing, I guess. Th these are pictures of the first uh, Hacker Jeopardy yeah. in, uh, in ETS. So first Hacker Jeopardy of NordSec, but we had prior... Hacker Jeopardies in uh, at Hackos. This uh, initiative was started at Hackos. We're always so. on the old pictures because it was like ten of us. So that's why. <laughs> you want another one or? Ah uh, yeah sure. Uh, uh, did I throw this away already? Nope. Uh, yeah that one. I don't know about that one. Tu peux le dire en français les caisses de Oh yes. I think I think this one is better. Okay go ahead. And no. it's the last one. 
Okay. No, I, I won't go. I go. I will go with budgeting. No, anyways, um, ask me a different question. Oh, ask I'm me. All, I, ask threw, me. I threw it on the floor. Oh, oh I know. I know what I'll do. Um, Let's go. I could. I could propose one. Which uh, would be a good except for what? You're, you're gonna answer your own question. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. As Olivier was about to ask me. <laughs> That's great. We, we were having this discussion in my head. Um, he said. What's the hardest thing about leaving Nordsec? Because it's going to happen ah. to everyone sitting on that stage at some point. Some people here did. Some people are planning to it. And it's interesting because I had to leave Nordsec at some point. Like, like somebody mentioned babies at some point. It was edgy. That's cool. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, um, one of the things I, I found the hardest thing was to leave Nordsec because that's some, it, it's what I did. And as I, I remember, um, it's... You are never as good. Uh, in fact, the organization is always as good as you are. So at some point, you become the limitation of the event. So the event you're seeing today could have, couldn't have existed with me. Because I, I ended up to a point where what I knew as a president, as, as the guy that ran the show, wasn't, I, I sucked with diversity. I, I wasn't good in many things. So I found people that were better than me to take away. But even today, after I, I left, I don't know, 2018, even today, I want to come back. I want to help. And I always tell myself, no, nah, no, nah, don't, don't. It's well, like a children. I never had children. You help at the bar. Well, I am you a, drink. I am, a, I'm just a clerk. That's what I do. <laughs> but yeah, at some point when you create something like Nartsec, if you want it to become as good as that, you need to let it go. You need to let it grow on, it, on itself. You need to give it everything it can, but you, you already gave enough. So that's a thank you for asking, Olivier. <laughs> so that, if you ever create something like that, let it go at some point. It was a great question. I know you're so good. All right, so we're, we're running late. Uh, food is already uh, over there. Martin, do you want to come up and talk about the logistics? So we're going to turn into party mode. If you have, like, we cannot, we cannot summarize 11 years in, uh, in just one hour and 15 minutes. So uh, if you want to talk about what happened, you've seen 12 people, 13, including me tonight. Go and talk to them. They would love to talk about NordSec and answer your questions. So with that, Martin. Talk to us about the party.